Let me read the 23rd Psalm. Many of you have probably memorized this uh, Psalm. Some of you probably in the old King James Version, but no matter how you say it, it all says the same thing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Very comforting. And we hear this a lot at funerals because it is comforting. And so we're going to take a closer look at this. I know that in my family we memorized the 23rd Psalm as kind of a family project when the children were young. I think it's a great one to have in your memory. It's very comforting as to how the Lord looks after and takes care of us. We learn, learn in this Psalm that he's very that he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, and he's ever-present, tenderly caring for those that belong to him. That's what a shepherd does. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know mine, and they know me. You know, a fact, I'm going to be telling you a few facts about sheep and how they are. It helps us to understand a little bit about this uh, we are the sheep in this uh, uh, in this psalm, and of course Jesus is the good shepherd. So, but if several shepherds were to take their flocks and put them into one pen, and they're all milling around in there, and one of the shepherds got ready to go, he would just go out there and say, "Come to me, flock. We're going now." They would all come out. This is actually what sheep would do right now today they would come they hear their shepherd everyone come out not none would be left behind none that didn't belong wouldn't come only those that were his he knows them and we know him as we look at this verse by verse david is writing the lord is my shepherd he says you see there my shepherd in these Six verses, we see at least 16 times he says, me, my, I, very personal. But as believers, we all have the ultimate, have an ultimate, have a, uh, uh, a relationship, a loving relationship with the creator of the universe through Jesus Christ. That's what he's pointing out here. And uh, so we're just going to kind of look at what, David, how, how, how it affects him and how it affects us. He says, I shall not want in verse 1. You see, right off the bat we see he, he uh, makes them to lie down in green pastures. He leads them beside still water. He's providing for them. He's taking care of what they need. They need food and water, and this is what's happening. The shepherd is taking care of what the sheep need. An interesting fact, another one about the sheep is that uh, sheep won't lie down if there's any sense of fear around. But it says the shepherd asked them to lay down. He made me to lie down. The sheep have put complete trust in their shepherd. It says here, they trust him. Um, he knows that they need to lie down because if they don't, they won't digest their food properly, and that's important. So he's looking for, looking out for them. He's always looking out for us. It says there that he leads them beside still water. You know, sheep are deathly afraid of water, especially running water. They don't want anything to do with running water. You need to take them to quiet waters. You need to take them to still waters because if they get into the water, their fur fills up with water and they'll just flip over on their back and drown. So the shepherd takes them.
to the calm water. Some people will say, uh, they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe in him as the good shepherd. Well, they might say, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. Well, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And uh, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Again, in verse 1, it says, I shall not want. Surprisingly, some people look at that, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, as I don't want him. I, I don't want him. Or they're thinking some strange thing like that. That's not what it means. It means the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for anything, need anything. He will provide for me. That's what it's talking about. He's the good shepherd, and he wants only what's good for us. We see that in Philippians 4.19. He gives us what we need, and sometimes we'll ask him for things, and we won't receive it. The Father will delay in granting it to us, and you can be assured that if he doesn't grant it to you, he has a good reason. And this is something that I've been learning personally, and I learned this a little clearer as I studied this message, not to be running out in front of the shepherd so much. Stay in the flock. That's what he's been teaching me. I have a tendency to want to run out there and take care of things myself. And so he's saying, come back and stay close to me. Because he leads us. He's our guide. He provides leadership for us, and he always leads us in the right way. Whether it's that calm, lush place that we see in verse 2, or that kind of frightful, dark place we see in verse 4, he's always there. He's always leading us in the right way. Down his path. Down the right path. No one always likes where that path leads in our life. Um, but if we follow the Good Shepherd, we can be assured that uh, he will uh, always lead us in the right direction. Psalms 37, 23 tells us that. And uh, it says in verse 3, it says, He restores my soul. We as believers, uh, we all stray away from our Lord. We've all strayed. Simply put, that's called sin. You know, we stray. Thankfully, our Good Shepherd is willing to restore to us fellowship with Him when we confess our sins and draw near to Him. And he fills us with peace and joy, like we had before. So why do you think some people wander away from God? Well, often Christians drift because they believe Satan's lies or the temptations of the world. That's why it's important for us to listen to the shepherd's voice. We need to be reading our Bibles. We need to be praying. That's how we hear the shepherd's voice. That's how he guides us and directs us. Jesus never tells us to do something that is in contradiction to God's word. If you think you're listening to the shepherd's voice and he's telling you, you to do something that's contrary to God's word, it's not Jesus talking to you. It's not the good shepherd. He never tells you to do anything that the Bible says not to do. So he's always looking out for us. And the fourth verse it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. A shadow can't harm you. Can the shadow of an angry dog bite you? He can't hurt you. You walk through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. It may mean death is close, but you don't have to fear it because he's there. And uh, if we walk with Jesus, we're walking in the light. And if 
unless we're walking in the light, there isn't any shadow. But even if we're going through the shadow and we're close to death, if we're walking with Jesus, if we're walking with the shepherd, we don't have to fear. He promises us peace when we go with him, when we follow him, when we follow his direction down his path, he promises peace. Philippians 4, 7 and John 14, 20, or 14, uh, 27, uh, both tell us that. And uh, as we go through low points in our life, we may face sorrow and heartache and doubt and all kinds of adversity, but we need not be afraid because we know that we need not fear anything because he's with us, our good shepherd. No matter what happens, we don't have to be afraid. We have his constant presence of our good shepherd that provides for us uh, everything that we need. David mentions the shepherd's protection or some parts of his protection when he talks about the rod and the staff. Some interesting things here about that that we can use to, to glean a little bit of, of how Christ uh, protects us and looks after us. Each one of these tools were very important to the shepherd and the sheep were very familiar with them. And the rod was a long pole with a crook at the end and the shepherd would use this to guide the sheep back into the flock as they wandered off as we do. And if they were to fall into a ditch like we often do, he was able to get them out of there. So that's what that was for. And then there was the, and that was the staff and the rod was much smaller and it was basically a club. And he, he used that to protect the, the sheep from anything that might want to harm them. And that's those days there were bears and lions and those sort of things. What's amazing is the shepherds were a lot of times young boys. Can you imagine a young boy taken after a mountain lion with a club? I mean, that gives you some kind of idea. I was thinking about, you know, uh, I could just see David going after Goliath with a, a slingshot and a handful of rocks. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just, uh, he's just right there. He's right there to take care of us. We enjoy uh, that protection of the Lord, our good shepherd. Galatians 3.3 3 tells us that, that we are in him. And we are in such a secure position. Uh, he plans, you know, he, he plans ahead. He makes preparations for us. He's our great hope for tomorrow, and he's our great hope for today. But, you know, I think David was looking forward to his heavenly home while he was here on earth when he wrote verse 5 and 6, because he writes, uh, You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's looking forward to this most awesome future that he has. We need to know that nothing in, the, in this life that we can face that is greater, no problem. There's nothing in this, there's no problem in this life that's greater than our shepherd's ability to deal with it. Because we're following the one that knows the way. He knows the way to go. I love that. We see that in Psalm 37 and also in Job. He also goes with us, we're told. He goes with us. He doesn't expect us to go alone. He goes with us. Great little statement that I love. It says, with him near... I need not fear. Just a little something to remember. File that away. With him near, I need not fear. I love that. Uh, Jesus promised that he would go and prepare a place for us someday. 
and I love this. I, you know, I can't stop talking about it. I'm sorry, folks. You've heard me say it before, but uh, for those that receive his gift of forgiveness and trust him with their life, it's told in John 3, 3 and 14, 2, 3, it says that, uh, that he's gone to prepare a place for this, for us. And uh, those who who know the Lord have absolute assurance that death is not the end. Death is not the end of things, but rather the beginning. The beginning of the most awesome adventure you'll ever take. I, uh, I had a friend that went to this church years ago, and uh, he lived right across the road here. His name was Bill Little. He was ranked fifth in the world as a heavyweight boxer. I don't know if you know who Rocky Marciano is. That's a long time ago. Rocky Marciano was heavyweight champion of the world, and he used to box with Bill Little. And he said he had the greatest potential of a young fighter of any that he's seen. Later in life, Bill Little, six foot eight, about 340 pounds of him, come to know Jesus Christ right here in this little church. And Bill is a good friend of mine. And he loved the Lord with all his heart. Well, when he died, I went to his funeral. And I walked into the funeral home. And I, real, I had a real sense of loss. I felt sad. But then, I had this overwhelming sense of joy. I had this overwhelming peace. I knew where Bill was. He was up front in that box. Bill was with the Lord. He was with the Good Shepherd. Nothing compares to the awesome promise that believers have in Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. And he wants that for you, too. If you don't know our Good Shepherd, if you don't know Jesus Christ, accept Him. Accept that Jesus as we start the new year and our good, shepherd is, our good shepherd is always there. He's always looking out for us. He has our best interest in always. So now I say, let's go forth into the new year looking forward and trusting in the leading of our great shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you. You are our great shepherd. You are our guide. You are our protector. You are our provider. You are our teacher. Thank you. Thank you for uh, this song, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that we might gain some insight into your, your love for us. We thank you. We pray your... Uh, Blessings on the rest of our service as we go. And uh, as we go into this new year, I pray that you would just guide us in your ways, that we'd be obedient to follow. In Jesus' name, amen.